Hi, this is Teo from PuckerBlocks.com. Last week I showed you a silver nib called the Cross Music Emperor. Today I want to show you this nib called the Cross Emperor. So there's no music in this one. This is the silver pen in its pretty standard body. The torpedo shaped body, high gloss, very well polished finish. Gold trimming at the top bottom of the cap and also at the top and bottom of the body. This is the Cross Emperor nib. The Emperor is actually this tab on top. This is a gold tab on top that is a bit flexible and it's there to hold ink between the tab and the uh, nib. So if you use this as a dip pen, it can hold quite a lot of ink. The cross part is actually, I'll bring your attention to this slit here. This is a horizontal slit that goes from left, right to left and then across the nib. So we have, uh, it goes from the side of the nib across the front of the tip and then it intersects with the normal slit. So that's the cross. The tab actually covers the design of the nib. So if you are not going to be using this as a dip pen, then the, you might save some money by not getting the Emperor tab. And you'll be able to see the design of the nib. This is a 21K gold nib. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to call this the Cross. And the other pen that I reviewed last week is called the Cross Music. And today I'm going to use this pen as a dip pen. It does come with a converter, which is a pretty standard sailor converter. But today I'm using this as a dip pen to show you how the Emperor tab works. I'm using noodles ink here. This is, I'm not sure what ink it is, but it's almost black color. Let me dip the pen inside and rinse it off a bit and show you the Emperor tap in action. Can you see the ink that is collected between the tap and the top of the nib? So, yeah, it can collect quite a bit of ink and the feet section is also quite wet with ink. So together with the Emperor tab and the feet, this pen, this nib is going to give you a very juicy line. So let's try drawing with it. As an artist, I don't use this pen for writing a lot, but I'm going to give you some writing samples because some of you want to see how it writes. So this pen actually gives a very thick stroke. I would say it's about a medium to broad. It has some variations because of the way the nib is curved at the tip. So that will give you the variation. And it puts out a lot of ink. So I'm not sure if you can see if this ink is still glistering. If you're going to be using waterproof ink and you're going to be using watercolor, make sure that the ink dries properly before you apply watercolor because uh, it puts out a lot of ink, it will take a bit of time to dry. Let's try it with the strokes. So this is a quick stroke where I lift the pen up at the end so you can get a very tapered stroke, like almost like a grass for drawing grass. And if I do a very slow stroke, so I get a very broad line. If I tilt the pen more vertically, I can get a medium line. So depending on how you hold the pen, the thickness of the stroke is going to vary. Let's do something like a circle. The difference is actually not as obvious as the cross music nib. Let me show you the cross music nib as well. This is the cross music nib, which looks pretty similar. I'm going to dip the cross music into the ink as well and show you by drawing a circle. I'm not sure if you can see the difference, but at the parts where it's going down, the stroke is much thinner. So this is very thin, 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 thin but the horizontal strokes, they are very broad. And the reason is because the nib is cut 
uh, quite thinly in one side. So this is the music, the cross music. It gives you a vertical thin stroke and a broad horizontal stroke as compared to the cross nib which gives you a broad horizontal stroke and I'll say a medium vertical stroke. It does give you some variation but not as much as the cross music. So in this case, I prefer the cross music because of the variation that you can give. Let's try some cross hatching lines and see what. So I'm tilting the pen a bit more vertically now to get the thinner lines. Even so, it's still quite a bit, it's still quite thick. You can also use the back of the nib. Someone commented uh, they wanted to see the back of the nib to see how it does. So you can write with the back of the nib as well. But it's not as smooth compared to using it properly on the other side. Because it's not as smooth, I will go a bit slower so as not to scratch the paper. But yes, you can use it on the other side as well. And you can get very much even thinner lines. So this pen can give you super thin medium lines and really broad confident strokes okay I'm just going to draw from a photo reference that I found online take note of the strokes whether or not the pen can give you blobs and stuff like that I think this person is a truck driver who's looking out from his window The lines are pretty expressive, you can get thin lines but you have to make conscious effort to get those thin lines because the tip of the nib is actually quite broad so when I want thin lines I usually tilt the pen in a more vertical manner like now This is a very broad stroke, so typically I use this pen in a paper size that is about A5 and above. So this guy is looking out from some truck window, I think. This is his hand. I really like using this pen as well as the cross music, because generally speaking I prefer broad lines. So most of my fountain pens are either medium or broad. I find that broader lines they are more striking. Also notice that this is still from the same single dip of ink and the bottle just now. I have not reloaded it since earlier. And because the nib is so broad you can use it for coloring black areas as well. I'm going to show that to you right now. So this is really great at coloring black areas. And be careful when you're coloring because um, when you go over the line like that, it's definitely going to smudge if your hand touches the paper. So I'm always very conscious about that when I'm drawing with this particular pen. So I'm actually covering quite a lot of area with just one single dip into the... Okay, I think it's beginning to dry out now. I think the ink is starting to dry out. Yep, the feed section is almost dry as well. So let me dip it again into the bottle and carry on with the shading. Okay, I think that's almost done. My drawing is done. Let me show you a bit closer and look at the strokes so for this part where I went very fast you can see the almost the dry stroke effect but if I go very slow then you will get the sharp edges very nice sharp edges and this part you can see it's very bright very strong contrast here 
and sometimes it has a bit more ink like this part here where it blobs out a bit more ink but generally speaking it's pretty it's considered pretty consistent in terms of the stroke but it has that little variation that I like a lot not as much as the cross music maybe I will draw the same person using the cross music name just to let you see the difference I'm just going to draw a smaller version I just dip the pen into the bottle so I can use the thin lines for the eyes I make conscious effort to tilt the pen up for the thin lines as well see here the lines are starting to become broader because I want them to be so you can see the thin line here followed by the stroke broad stroke here you cannot get this variation with the cross knit you cannot get such a big variation in terms of thickness with the broad with the cross knit this is the cross music you can do that so this is the cross Knit. you can see that the difference is not as much as the cross music and this is the music cross music so it's, it's much thinner and then it goes into broad this is about medium to broad and it goes into even broader the cross nib and the cross music nib, these two are some of my favorite nibs when it comes to drawing. I really like the bold strokes that they can create because of the cross slit. It gives out a lot of ink, so the lines are very striking, they have a lot of contrast, and you can draw very fast and the ink flow will always keep up. As for the Emperor tab, unless you want to use this pen as a deep pen then uh, I would say then go for the Emperor tab if you just want to use this as a normal fountain pen the Emperor tab is not necessary it doesn't improve the ink flow in any way it's just an extra ink reservoir on top of the nib so you can draw for a longer period of time if you use it as a deep pen but for normal purposes it's not necessary you can save your money on the Emperor tab overall I think this is a very good pen but it's also quite pricey but of course as with all fountain pens they last a long time so it might be actually worth the money if you invest in one that's all for my review today if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section below i will answer them and if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel do so for more art product reviews sketching tips and techniques art book and sketchbook features that's all. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. See you next time. Bye.